I used to take my mother's glasses and I would put her glasses on because I, as a young person, I just thought glasses made you see better. I didn't consider prescriptions and all of those things. So when I took my mother's glasses and I put her glasses on, the, when I put the glasses on, the view that I had was distorted. And I couldn't see clearly because I was looking through mama's glasses. But mama's glasses had a prescription on it, so everything I saw was blurred, and it was according to what my mother would see rather than according to what I would see. So when I put on mama's glasses, my vision became distorted. But when I took off her glasses, I could see clearly because I stopped trying to look through mama's glasses and I took off the glasses so my vision could be restored. I've come today to tell you there's a lot of folk in religion trying to see God's word through somebody else's glasses. And until you take off mama's glasses and until you take off papa's glasses and until you take off pa pastor's glasses, you will never see the word of God clearly because you're trying to see through somebody else's glasses. And I've come today to tell you, you got to take off mama's glasses. Mama might have been what she was, and daddy might be who he is. But the question is, do you obey God's word according to the commandments rather than according to the tradition? And if you're trying to keep mama's tradition and not keep the word of God, I've come today to tell you, you're a victim of a hand-me-down religion. And I want to talk about some hand-me-downs that folk got. Are y'all all right this morning? I just want to tell you about a few hand-me-downs. That has happened in religion. I want to give you three hand-me-downs. Uh, the first hand-me-down I want to give you, and so many people have been affected by this hand-me-down, is the grace-only hand-me-down. Now I'm going to tell you how dangerous this doctrine is. I want to tell you who gave it to us, first of all, because the tradition in this text is a tradition of men. That means it came from a man. And I'm going to tell you about a hand-me-down uh, that came uh, from a man named John Calvin. He gave us a hand-me-down and a lot of folk are looking through John Calvin's glasses so when they go to the Word of God they want to understand the Word of God according to what John Calvin has given us and let me tell you what he gave John Calvin came up with a theory that is referred to as the uh, tulip theory um, and what you find is John Calvin taught that a person is saved by grace alone. Now let me show you the implications of that. What John Calvin believed was that a person could be saved and never have to do anything to be saved. He believed that a person did not have to obey God because they were incapable of obeying God. So he taught that don't worry about obeying God because you can't obey God. He's got to save you by grace alone because there's nothing you can do. Dangerous doctrine. And when, a, and when a person accepts that theology, they're looking through John Calvin's glasses and as a result, they are not saved. That tradition prevents a person from being saved because John Calvin says you are saved by grace alone. And there's a lot of folk that have accepted that hand-me-down. If you could just move the board for me, or two brethren can move the board a little closer. I'm going to give you a couple of diagrams and I'm going to be finished. Listen, the second one, uh, the second tradition is the faith-only tradition. This was given by Martin Luther. Now let me tell you something about this church. I just want you to know this. Martin Luther never taught against baptism. That's a misunderstanding. Martin Luther came up with the faith-only phrase as an attack on Catholicism. He did not believe in the rights of Catholicism. So he taught that you are saved by faith alone apart from the works of the Catholic Church. Now some folk got a hold of that and they interpreted Martin to be saying that you are saved by faith alone, absent and apart from obedience. That's not what Martin Luther even taught. Martin Luther taught, if you look at that, there's a book, and it's a good book that you just had. It's called The Writings of Martin Luther. In that book, Martin Luther believed that a person had to be baptized in order to be saved. He believed that. And it's in his writings. But a lot of folk uh, took what, John, what Martin Luther said and they twisted it to mean that you're saved by faith alone apart from, uh, apart from obedience. But Martin Luther never taught that. Now, he was wrong on baptism in the sense that he believed you should baptize a baby. He was wrong on that. 
He was wrong because he believed in this thing called baptismal regeneration. He was wrong on that. But he was not wrong about his position that faith is exercised in baptism. He was right about that. But there's a lot of folk that took the faith only position and they said it means that you are saved when you just believe in God, separate and apart from obedience. Is everybody clear about what I'm saying? And then the third tradition is that you are saved when you call on the name of the Lord. The religious world interprets that to mean you are saved when you pray about it. Three hand-me-down religions. Three hand-me-down positions that will prevent you from being saved if you accept them. And preachers all across the country and on television are preaching these positions. Listen, and let me show you what they have in common. Each one of them prevents you from obeying God. Each one of them. They on TV. No wonder folk don't want to obey God. If you got enough preachers telling you you don't have to, you start believing that. And every channel you turn on, the preacher's saying, say the sinner's prayer. Every time you turn around, you're saved by grace only. Every time you turn around, you're saved by faith only. Let me deal with the first one. Let's deal with the first one. And I'm going to write this down for those who might be taking notes. Uh, uh, It's the grace only position. So when we're talking about grace... When you're talking about grace only, grace only, what does the Bible teach about grace only? Here is my position. My position is that grace is located in Christ. That's my position. It's located in Christ. In other words, if you want grace, you got to get in the right position. There is a process that will bring you into that position. Now, grace is in Christ, and you've got to get where grace is. Now, what is grace? Grace is Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. That is the grace of God, that he sent his son to die in our place. That's the unmerited favor of God. Now, if you want to come in contact with grace, you've got to get where grace is. And I'm going to show you there will be no grace if you don't have obedience. Give me 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1. And then I'm going to Galatians chapter 1 and verse number 6. 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, rather 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1. I want to see what the Bible says. Thou therefore, my son. Thou therefore, my son. Be strong in the grace. Be strong in the grace. That is in Christ Jesus. Where is it? In Christ Jesus. Listen, church, I need to tell you that grace is located somewhere. And if you want grace, you got to get where grace is. Is everybody following this so far? So when a person says, I'm saved by grace, my question is, have you gotten in Christ in order to be saved by grace? Because grace is located in a certain place. And it's located in Christ. So if you want grace, you got to get where grace is. Because grace must be accessed. Let me say that again. Grace must be accessed. Accessed. Give me Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. and uh, yeah, ver- Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2. Because grace must be accessed. You are not saved by grace if you have not first gotten in the right place. Now grace was demonstrated on Calvary. But you don't come in contact with that grace until you get in Christ Jesus. All right, what does the Bible say in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2? Therefore, being justified by faith. Therefore, being justified by faith. Notice it didn't say faith only. It says you're justified by faith. Read. We have peace with God. We have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom we also have access. By whom also we have what? Access. We have what? Access. Access to what? By faith. By faith. Into the grace. Into grace. Watch this. You got to access grace. That means you got to get where grace is. Now the question becomes, how do I get where grace is? Are y'all fine? We're just going to school for a few minutes. Y'all all right in here? All right, let's go to school for a few minutes. I, 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 we try In the Church of Christ, we try to preach to educate, not preach to entertain. So when you come here, you'll leave with knowledge. And there's some folk that got more religion in their body than they got in their head. And that's why so many folk are so false, because they got a whole lot of religion in their hands and their feet, but they don't have no religion in their mind. And they don't know what God teaches. We don't mind you getting excited about God, but you got to know what you're getting excited about. Praise God. You get to shouting and get to jumping. Yeah, you see, you know me, Brother Hayward, don't mind that. But make sure you know what you're jumping about. You better make sure you know what the Bible teaches. Because you can't jump on a lie. you got to jump on the truth. 
And if you're going to say amen, say amen on truth. If you're going to say hallelujah, say hallelujah on truth. If you're going to say thank you, Jesus, say thank you, Jesus, on truth. Because it's truth that sets you free. So you can't get excited until you first got some religion in your mind. Then when you get the religion in your mind, you can manifest it in joy. Are y'all following what I'm saying? 